In episode 20, we introduce LIDAR to the analysis of our stone structures in Gilbert Hills State Forest here on Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. We're going to carry through the episode on perched boulders, but just want to introduce the concept and a quick view of LIDAR so you can be prepared for what you're going to see here in this episode and future episodes. Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. Today, episode 20, we're going to continue the dialogue around perched boulders. But we're taking the perched boulders from a slightly different perspective than the last episode. <clears throat> last episode, we demonstrated several of them that had alignment to Equinox events. Today, I wanted to cover another side of the Meisen article from the New England Antiquities Journal, which I cited in the last episode. I'll cite again in this one. And that was really an article about use of perched boulders in ceremonies uh, and cults, if you will, uh, in uh, Northern Europe. And doing a bit of a uh, survey of use of perched boulders in ceremonial aspects in ancient uh, humans across the globe. I mean, it's that, that article spans from Korea, Southern, uh, Southern Europe, into uh, the Americas and the Native American use. Either way, I wanted to cover this one because it does sit near, as Meisen uh, recognizes, in some of the systems created by or, uh, or some of the systems that perch boulders were part of as evidence that it was man-made or they were uh, used intentionally for a purpose. I wanted to cover this one that is very close to another cluster of stone objects, stone structures, that would imply that it is near a ceremonial site. Ceremonial sites are something that, that we will uh, cover in a whole different future segment of this series, but for now I wanted to cover uh, this one related to a ceremonial site. However, on the way to researching and coming back to this one had been a few years, I noticed a feature that I hadn't seen before, reminded me a little bit of the first uh, perch boulder that we saw in the last episode, and now I wanna take a little diversion on the topic. We will cover the local ceremonial site, uh, but I wanna throw out the idea that, uh, that we are seeing here, uh, at least in several instances, perch boulders as effigies. What is an effigy? An effigy is something to be made look like something else. We covered bird effigies, we've covered snake effigies. Uh, so effigies, stone structures uh, were not um, uncommon for ancient Native Americans, uh, but it does generate a lot of controversy. Could be natural forces making these, what have you. So what I want to do is introduce a new technology to at least this series. It's not brand new, but it's just beginning to be used in, uh, in study of ancient human structures and civilization, and that is LIDAR, light, direction, and ranging. And what it is, LIDAR is essentially a use of light or lasers uh, in the same concept of radar to create detailed 3D mapping of areas, structures, and things. So we're gonna get into this structure with LIDAR. I'm gonna point out the features here in the old fashioned camera. And then there's an amazing tiny little feature here that I think everybody's gonna be super interested in and the LIDAR is really gonna help explain. All right, so real quick, uh, from your perspective here, from your vantage point, imagine here the eye up here nose and a mouth. Natural forces? Sure, could be, but let's take a closer look and see what you think after we get the LIDAR on a feature that is essentially sticking out of what could be the mouth of this effigy. As we approach uh, this perch boulder, we're going to show why I think it's perched. So there's the boulder and here's the perching stone down here that it is uh, resting on to its rear, if it's facing that way. And then here's a close-up of uh, the effigy features. So if we take a look at this being an eye, this being a nose, we're going to get in here with the LiDAR and check out that shape. Now, here's the amazing thing that I noticed the other day when I was scouting this. 
and that would be what <laughs> a tongue if that's if this is the mouth so that little feature there is something that it's hard to believe would have been carved by mile thick glaciers as these boulders were rolling around and uh, and really what I wanted to use the lidar for so as we uh, get into the lidar in a second I want to just very quickly since we've got the GoPro out show you the proximity to what we'll come back to later on which is a cluster of structures rings cairns and right here along this ledge line the first item here is a standing stone in a ring right here so beyond that is an area we will explore in future episodes in future segments on uh, structural clusters potential ceremonial sites but for now let's take a look at the lidar on this perch boulder all right so we are taking a look here at that perch boulder with the lidar the light detection and ranging you can see that tiny little rock that's holding up the back of the boulder here and then the side that we've highlighted that could potentially be an effigy. So we take a look at the first feature here, which could be the eye up top. Moving forward, we take a look at how that runs into the nose. You can see that the LiDAR is picking up a different pigment of that stone. I don't know if that indicates that that's worked or not but I think it is interesting to note. And in the bottom here, we see the mouth. And we're gonna take some movement around the mouth here because as I teased out earlier, there's a little feature toward the front of that mouth that uh, is sort of amazing. And frankly, kind of looks like a little tongue hanging out or something hanging out of the mouth. But that crack right there looks, taking a close up of that mouth. Now you can see me sort of struggle to line up the shot here to get it the right way. I'm new at manipulating the LiDAR video, so it's a little bit of a struggle, but we're trying to take a closer view, sliding in from the rear of the mouth into that front part to get a close-up of the object that is at the end of the mouth or sticking out of the mouth, and you can see it right there. All right, so as we zoom out, you see that profile of the stone again. You can judge for yourself whether you think that is an effigy of a face of something. And we're going to go back to the first structure we did in the last episode, episode 19. And frankly, every person that I've showed this to thinks it looks like a frog. So there's a nice side shot of the right side of the perch boulder contacting the ground and then the left side now, or the right as we rotate it around, two smaller stones holding that boulder up at an angle. You can see the blank spaces there where I didn't follow through and carry the LiDAR all the way around the stone. I'll improve my technique as we go along. Uh, but, uh, yep, those are the two little stones underneath there. And now let's take a look at that sort of facial feature here as I try to line up the shot of uh, the mouth. It's not always easy moving this thing around, but you can see on the left side there, a little overhang of the nose and the mouth. You see a crack carrying through underneath. That's been, if that has been worked, that has been chipped away, so there's an overhang to indicate a mouth. And as we rotate it around, you see a little crack following through on the left side as well. So there's parallel symmetrical cracks that protrude from the right and left of the mouth down the side of the stone. And now we're going to take a look at some, potentially some eyes. So take a look at the top of that as we zoom in. Right and left, and this is the right one, the little leaf caught in it. There's a little slit in there. And then to the left, there is another one. And so if that lines up with two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, do you have an effigy? And that is the question, and I'll leave it for you to answer it. Okay, well, those are uh, a couple of examples of how effigies may find their way onto perch boulders. 
I haven't really seen a lot of research on that. I will continue to look, maybe bring up a, uh, uh, another episode on it if I find more, but given uh, the detail here and the fact that I did see some potential features on the first boulder last episode, I wanted to uh, highlight that as, as an interesting detour. This structure in of itself fits the Mizen uh, profile, if you will, of stone structures in that it is a perch boulder sitting near an area that is likely uh, had some had it's likely that had some sort of ceremonial aspects to it with the number of structures and features up on that uh, ridge top uh, that we saw earlier. Just to give you some perspective on where we sit in the overall series, we probably have a handful of structures still to go. The first segment of this whole, ep uh, this whole series was really about laying out what types of structures were out here, right? The, the ones we still have to go are perched, or the ones we still have to do yet are uh, stone rings, enclosures, uh, overhanging boulders, balanced boulders, caves, among a handful of other structural types. So that's five or more left to do in the first part of the series. Then we've got a couple of other segments planned, one around clusters where structures are very close to one another, usually on outcrops of rock, and so you can imagine laying that out, and LIDAR will uh, be a lot of fun in doing that, laying that out and seeing the positioning of all of it uh, and begin to postulate what that might have been and been for. Next, we will go into a whole uh, exploration of the angles structures create that seemingly tend to point to other structures and how far does that go and what does it really mean? I think that would be an interesting segment. There are a number of different uh, sites to explore on that topic. And then lastly, I've come across some field notes from the late John Maver Jr., co-author of Manitou, a seminal book back in the 80s, uh, and John Maver uh, was a great researcher in the area. One of his final papers published in 2006 around the relationship of stone structures in a nearby forest in Sharon, Massachusetts, to the Pleiades uh, constellation. Just so happens that John Maver in the 80s spent some time here in this forest. His field notes, unpublished, still sit in the town historical archives. I've gotten access to those, and we may have to do a whole segment on what John Maver Jr. was doing here in the 80s, what his research showed, and, uh, and, and talk about that a little bit more. So those are the future segments. We've got a handful more of structural types to cover. Appreciate you watching. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.